Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. And we just released an update for 3dprintlog.com that lets you connect up your Octoprint instance so that way Octoprints can create new prints, update print statuses, print times, and filament usage, and save all that information directly to your 3D print log. This connection makes use of the Octoprint webhooks plugin by Blaine Townsend. So let's go through how to set that up. So first we need to download the Octoprint webhook plugin. You can do that by going to your Octoprints and clicking on Settings and Plugin Manager, and then click the Get More button down at the bottom. Uh, here we can search for Octoprint Webhook and find the Webhook plugin by Blaine Townsend, and then we'll install that to your Octoprint. Step two is to generate an API key so that Octoprint knows uh, which user you are. So navigate to 3dprintlog.com and sign in, and then you can click on your user profile picture and select the personal API keys menu option. This will bring you to a place where you can manage your API keys. So you can click create new API key, and we can enter in the description such as Octoprint webhook key, and then click submit. And this will generate a new API key. Now just a quick word of caution, you should treat this API key like a password because if anyone had this API key, they would be able to act as your user when using a webhook plugin. So copy that new 32 character key uh, and make sure you have a reference to that because when you refresh this page, that key will no longer be able to be retrieved. So we'll copy that and save that for a future step. The last bit of information we need from 3D Print Log is to find what printer your Octoprint instance is going to connect to. So we can get that printer ID by going to your printers page and finding the printer that you want to use and click on it to open up the printer details. Then up at the top in the URL, we can find the uh, ID number of your particular printer. So copy that ID. And in my case, this printer ID is 27, so I'll just save that for the next step. And now we can add that information to the Octoprint webhooks plugin. So let's go back to Octoprints, we'll navigate to settings, and then scroll down in the menu to find the webhooks menu under the plugin section. Once we've opened up webhooks, we can click create a new hook. So under URL, we will copy and paste the URL from the documentation. Next up, we'll scroll down to the webhook parameter section and we will change the HTTP method to post. We'll change the content type to XWW form URL encoded. We will change the API secrets and we will paste in the personal API key that we created in step two. And then under device identifier, we will copy the printer ID that we retrieved in step three. Then we can scroll down to the advanced section and we can change the headers. We can copy and paste uh, from the documentation on 3D print log. We will update the headers to include the two headers we need. And then we will change the data also to the uh, chunk of data copied from the 3D print log documentation. And then finally, once all that's been copied and pasted, we can click save to save the settings. Now I like to, after it's saved, I like to refresh the tab uh, and go back to settings and the webhook and just double check that everything saved successfully. Um, sometimes, the settings on Octoprint don't save the way that you would expect them to. So I like to just double check that uh, the device ID and the API secrets all saved uh, the way that we inputted them. And if everything looks good, we can move on to the next step, which is sending a test message. So we'll go back to Octoprint and we'll go back to the settings and find the webhook menu and select our webhook that we just created. And then under the testing section, we can select a test event of print started and click the send a test webhook button. If everything's set up successfully, we should see a nice green response of webhook connection to 3D print log is good and also include with the correct printer name. And that tells us that everything is set up the way that we should expect. Now, if you get any error messages from that, um, you can visit the 3dprintlog.com Octoprint webhook documentation and find the troubleshooting section. And there you can see any error message. You can search for an error message and see what issues might come up. And now that everything's set up, whenever we start a new print within Octoprint, 
it will immediately save a new print within your 3dprintlog.com. So you can see I start a print here. I can jump over to 3dprintlog.com and refresh the page. And we see that a new print has been created. The status has been set to printing and we have the filament usage and estimated print times saved in that print. Now we can let this print uh, go to completion. And as soon as the print is done within OctoPrint, um, we will also get the uh, status change within 3D Print Log. So we can refresh the page. We see that the print time has been uh, changed to the actual print time that it took, uh, that OctoPrint is reporting, and the status has changed to completed nice and successful. And if something were to happen during the prints and you uh, say we were printing and we notice that uh, the print has failed for some reason, here I'm just going to uh, hit it with a, <laughs> a putty knife um, to simulate, you know, some stringing or, or something happened to the print. So if we were to cancel the print within OctoPrints, uh, we can see that it will set this print status to failed and it will also update to the print time. So this has been how you can set up your 3D print log in OctoPrint setup using the OctoPrint webhook plugin. So if you find this useful, or if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave feedback through 3dprintlog.com and happy printing.